This video has been a year in the making. I've got two versions of the same whiskey here. They came off the still at exactly the same time. I split the batch. One version has been aging for 12 months. The other was rushed through in six weeks. Is there gonna be differences? I'd hope so. <laughs> Let's find out. How's it going, Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, and this is Still It. These drinks here are the first versions of the Safety Net Whiskey that I've been making on the channel. Uh, you can check the playlist out. I'll put a link down in the description below for you. But the general idea is that they're made with real grain, with a real mash, but they're augmented with sugar. Uh, to give people that aren't sure if they really want to do all grain a bit of a nudge and a bit of a safety net to get in there and get stuck in. Uh, also, just to make it a bit easier and bump up the efficiency if that's what you're into too. Uh, but when I made this, I aged it in two different ways. I rushed one through with extra, extra wood uh, in the jar to get it aged up or aged up, you know, uh, oak teak bagged up in six weeks. And I was really happy with that at that point in time. But uh, the other version I've let sit for much longer with much less wood. And uh, it's been 12 months, guys. So this seemed like a nice round number to give it a good tasting at. And the other reason I wanted to do it now is that um, this has almost caught up to this in terms of straight up color. So this is the best I've got, sorry guys. I hope you can see that. But this one is a darker hue and a darker saturation. And so what I mean by that is it's a like a, a darker orange color to start with, but it's also just more uh, heavy. It's more dense in color as well. Slightly. We're pretty similar though. Anyway, uh, should we get stuck in? For those of you that don't remember or didn't see the video, this is the safety net whiskey that was made with uh, some specialty malts. And the thing that and the thing that really set it apart was that it had some Munich in there as well. Uh, the idea was to try and, you know, crank in some extra flavor to make up for time and to make up for the, the sugar went in, that went into the recipe as well. And I can still smell the Munich in there. It's quite pleasant in this. It's different. I've, uh, I've never had a whiskey, I don't think, that has presented with that Munich-y, biscuity, almost toasty, roasty flavor before but it fits it's a not so subtle boost to the grain side of things this is a touch piercing on the nose and i did proof this down to 40 percent abv that sat in the bottle sealed ever since i haven't opened this bottle once the other bottle got polished off real quick <laughs> there's hints just hints of maybe blackberry and pear but it's very much stuck in behind um you know, a slight piercing spirit note, like alcohol note, and the Munich. Pretty similar on the on the on the tongue, uh, except the one thing that is a little bit surprising is compared to the the smell, there's a little bit more of that honey sweetness that finishes it off, uh, and then you're left with the the honey sweetness that dries up from the astringency of the wood, and as it dries up, as it kind of disappears and dissipates, you're left with that Munich-y grain flavor again. Man, these flies are trying real hard to steal my shit right now. <laughs> totally different, completely different. That's not true. I shouldn't say it's completely different. It smells like, I mean, funnily enough, it smells like an older, more complex, less green <laughs> version of that. So I proofed this down to about 46% ABV, which is where I'm thinking of bottling it at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the nose is more restrained. The Munich flavor has dissipated a lot more. It's still there, just a touch funky. Not funky like uh, toe jam or blue cheese or anything crazy like that. Uh, not funky like a rum. Uh, Dusty, just dusty grain, which is quite nice. There's more fruit as well, specifically pear in this one. Not so much of the um, the dark stone fruity, you know, there's not like plum or like porty kind of flavors so much in this. There's a lot more going on over a longer period of time. And what I mean by that is different flavors show up over the period of 
it first hits your tongue through to, you know, I'm, I'm still getting something different coming through now, sometime after I've drunk it, right? The sweetness has evolved more, and it's now not just straight honey, it's more like uh, honey glazed pastry. It's probably actually the fact that the, the sweetness, the honey sweetness is starting to sort of marry with the grainy flavors as well. That's probably what I'm getting at when I'm, you know, saying the sort of honey glazed or sugar glazed pastries kind of things. Not like an American glazed donut, more like, uh, um, like a Danish, that sort of pastry. Now that I'm drinking this, I'm wondering if it could actually be even higher proof. So I don't know what proof this is going to be now. I mean, I don't know, maybe like 48, 49%, something like that. So this is something like 47 to 49%. Uh, drinks smoother on the finish than this does at 40%. But after drinking this and then going back to the early aged version, it's just kind of empty and watery. There's just so much less body and oomph to it while it's sitting in your mouth and after you swallow compared to this. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I might just bottle it as it is to be perfectly honest with you. It's starting to get a touch tannic, uh, which this doesn't have almost any of. It's not a bad thing for me. I kind of like that, honestly, in whiskies like this. Whiskies that could be very, very just approachable and sweet. I like a little bit of a finish that makes you want to come back and drink it. Uh, so I'm actually into this. And I think maybe that's part of the reason that the younger version feels a little bit empty to me. So all in all, uh, this I'm very impressed with for something that aged for six weeks and was made with two thirds sugar. <laughs> it's fine, it's great. So if you wanna make this recipe and rush it through and, and you know just get it into the bottle ASAP, by all means, go ahead and do so. I think six weeks was about the sweet spot for me when you started to notice a significant improvement. I'd hazard a guess, just because I've had this experience a lot in the past, you get to about four to six weeks and it improves significantly in a short-ish space of time. And then it'll plateau and sort of fluctuate up until about three to four months and then improve significantly again. I'm not saying that will happen. I'm saying it could happen if you wanted to aim for four months or something, you'd probably get somewhere in between these two. But if you have a year to wait, Totally worth it. <laughs> Completely and utterly worth it. It's surprising to me how good this is with that much table sugar in it, to be perfectly honest with you. Is it the fact that it is like an actual all grain wash mixed with table sugar? Maybe. Is it the fact that it is uh, inverted sugar instead of just straight sugar? Maybe. Is it a combination of both? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but it really is, in my books, quite impressive for the kind of the kind of recipe it is. Uh, in any case, guys, I need to say a huge, huge thank you to, excuse me. I've just realized I'm basically day drinking and I haven't eaten anything today. So uh, anyway, thank you, Patreons. I thoroughly appreciate it, team. I really do appreciate your support. It means a lot to me. And the interaction and the decision-making and the advice and all of those things that, that come up from time to time, uh, I thoroughly appreciate it, team, as well as obviously the, the tangible side of things as well. So, another little anecdotal data point to add to the idea that this is kind of the equivalent of low and slow cooking. Uh, taking the time, letting it age longer with less wood is, I don't know, there's just, there's just something about it. <laughs> Am I gonna let this go further? I don't know, man. Uh, I have a horrible habit of just letting stuff go and then forgetting about it. Um, I think I'm just gonna bottle this. I mean, it could be, it could get better, but uh, it's pretty good as it is, and I'll actually drink it like this. Like, it's not very often that I get to the point and I'm like, yeah, put that in a bottle and I'll happily sip it at night. <laughs> anyway, guys, please, uh, if you're intrigued by this recipe and you haven't seen it yet, you can check the, uh, the card up over here. They'll take you and show you exactly how I made it. If you enjoyed this video, for whatever reason, please give it a thumbs up.
down there, whichever side it's on. Hit the thumbs up button. That helps me out a whole bunch. Tells YouTube algorithm that uh, this is a cool video and other people should watch it as well. So I'd appreciate that. If you've got anything to say or you've got any ideas, hit the comment section. And if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed yet, sort it out. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you, uh, you get more videos like this popping up in your stream. And, and, keep on chasing the craft, guys. See ya.